Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to The Ted Show. I'm super excited that I finally got my buffering issue taken care of. I'm very, very excited that I have, I'm have. i finishing off Friday and kicking off the weekend with an amazingly talented musical guest, Lainey D. On. <laughs> Did I say that right? Yeah. No, no, say it right. Correct me. You had to correct me before. Dion. Dion. Okay, see? All right. I'm an old guy and I can learn new tricks. Uh, very excited <laughs> to have you on the show, Lainey. Lainey has been, I have to give her kudos publicly, very, very patient with so many things that have gone on since we scheduled the first show. So thank you for that. Um, I am excited to learn more about you. And before we went live, we talked about how the audience loves an origin story. So tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so originally um, I was very into Paramore in high school and I was in kind of like this like hard rock band and I only posted covers to YouTube in the dark. So <laughs> nice. Okay, I guess that's a good marketing something. Yep. So uh, after I went to Berklee College of Music, I kind of broke out of my shell and started playing folk music, set out a folk EP and it got the attention of a lot of people in the industry and then I switched over to the pop world and released this album self-titled. <laughs> and what was that like? Because I feel like those genres, even though I love all kinds of music, there's something about music I just love. It doesn't matter what it is, but I feel like that is a leap of some kind because pop, a lot of people think sugary. A lot of people think um, all the lyrics rhyme. It's quick. It's wrapped up. There's there's not a lot of depth to it, but I would, I, I would disagree with them. So what was it like for you to change? So I kept a lot of my folk roots. I sound very folky when I sing. <laughs> so it's got that to it anyways. Um, but I, I do indie pop. So it's it's got some depth to it. It's not it's not bubblegum pop. It's uh, a lot of my songs on the album are about finding self-worth and and dealing with toxic relationships and coming out the other side better for it. Um, so there's definitely some depth to, <laughs> to self-titled. There's some depth. To that tell me i'm always fascinated where um performers uh if you write your own music or even if you are inspired to pick a song that you didn't write where that inspiration comes from and not the basic question like oh do you look at the sky i want to know the real depths like do you get in a super emotional mode does something have to tragic happen to you in order for you to write uh what's your process like yeah i mean i take every single song as kind of like a snapshot of what I went through in that moment. So there's one song on the album where I'm kind of sort of uh, really depressed and borderline suicidal. And um, I just, I feel like once I write the song, the emotions that I was feeling in those moments live there now. So I don't have to carry everything with me all the time. It's, yeah, it's very much like an outlet. So I, I look at every song kind of like a picture, like that's where it lives. I don't have to carry that with me anymore. It's taking care of it. Um, so that's kind of never heard that heard it described like that, but how cathartic. <laughs> yeah. That's cathartic. I mean, it's you're giving birth in a cathartic kind of way. Cause I think all songwriters are all creatives, their projects, their are their babies in some way, shape, or form. And it's part of you. But I love the way that you describe that. I've never heard that before. And I would imagine though, tell us on the flip side, when you're performing those songs, do you immediately get drawn back into that feeling? Um, is it hard to come back out of it when you sing it? I mean, I do and I don't. You could turn it on and turn it off. You know, it's it's kind of, I don't want to say it's like acting, but like actors, when they are in a movie, they're obviously not the characters that they're playing. They're drawing from that emotion that they're feeling in their personal life. So like I can tap back into that emotion if I want to perform um, with that kind of emotion. But usually when it comes to the studio, it depends on the song most of the time I'm just really focusing on getting a good take, but on this album in particular, I'm crying through like <laughs> the songs <laughs> on the album. So like there's a song that's called Sentimental and you can actually hear me crying in the takes on that song. And we kept it all in the studio. So, you know, it depends on the mood. <laughs> <laughs> you cry live when you perform? I've actually, I've actually done that once. There's been one time that I've done that. Um, but no, not usually. No. You know, it's funny. Like I have, I'm obviously not a professional, but I have sang in front of audiences before. And sometimes when I see the reaction of somebody to what I'm singing, I'm not a songwriter, just performer, uh, have been. 
uh, I get emotional watching them get emotional about what I'm singing. So I would imagine if it's my own song, my own baby, my own thing that I released and gave birth to and it's out there, if I saw somebody reacting in a way that was moved, it would be very hard for me to perform. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten messages from people that have listened to, not all the songs are like super depressing on the album, I just like to say that. There's a lot of good, like happy, go lucky, fun songs. Um, but I've gotten messages from people that were like, wow, this song has saved my life. This song like wow. kept me going through the night, like those kind of things. I mean, you can't help but get emotional when you see stuff like that, you know? So what's what was the process like for you to get here? Uh, when we, before we went live, I said, I'm going to ask you, and I love to ask everybody, did you sing in front of the mirror? Did you have an audience? Did your parents encourage you? Did you come from a musical background? What was your background like? And what was the journey to get here? I mean, I didn't, I didn't do like, I sang in the shower growing up, but I never was like in like choir or like took voice lessons. Um, but I, the first time I ever performed was my sophomore year in high school. And uh, my hair was bright blue. <laughs> I was wearing knee high converses. Um, you were but, living that world. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, the song that I sang had three parts in it and me and my friend were singing. And then we asked the crowd to do the third part. And the crowd was like, when are we gonna know? Like, how are we gonna know to do that? And I said, I'm gonna kick my foot as high as I can up in the air. And I kicked my foot up and everyone sang the third part. And it was like a sea of, wow. I see a sea of people, but like there was like, Let's be honest, like 50 people, 50 high There's schoolers. Let's see when uh, you're on stage, I'll take it. <laughs> um, and yeah, and that, that was like the moment that I was like, wow, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Amazing. And then I, I always, it's always fascinating to me what the transition is, because a lot of times uh, people usually start, it's almost always they start before they graduate high school. There's very few like pick it up at 30. Um, but as you become an adult, then adult things come into play. You have to pay your bills. And are you able to perform enough and write enough and do your passion enough so that you can live? What was that uh, process like for you? Yeah, so I was very lucky that my parents could afford to send me to Berkeley for one year and then I had to pay for the other year. And I actually got my four year degree in those two years because I was just going ham, Work. hardcore at it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but after after graduating Berkeley, um, I feel like I added it to like all my little resumes, went to Berkeley College of Music, you know, it's, 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 I'm all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was able to play like three or four nights a week and over 90 venues in Rhode Island where I'm from. Um, so I'm making a living off of, this is all I do. I just perform and I gig and uh, and teach music. But of course that's been kind of an issue since the pandemic. Um, so luckily I've been able to do some sync stuff, which means you you write for TV shows and, and movies. Um, and I've been doing that for Amazon Prime and TLC right now. So you wow. know, life's, life's good. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. So you really did, you really had, because the pandemic really did impact. Oh, everybody. yeah. I feel like uh, creatives especially really had to go outside of their normal creative uh, four walls and figure out how to continue to do what they want to do and live. And you obviously continued the creativity and went outside the box. Are you back to performing live? So it's kind of tough because I, I was performing live outdoors all summer like uh, as many outdoor venues as i could um and right now i mean we just got snowed in i don't know where you're at but we just got a foot uh, of snow so uh <laughs> no outdoor right now uh yeah i'm in rhode island right now um so it's a little harder during the winter months um but i have stuff booked for the the summer months but sure. i've i've just been trying to do some live streams really go behind the scenes and and write as much as i can um so that's you're working you know, on yeah. your you're a work in progress i think we all are but that's <laughs> yeah. what makes it exciting that's what makes the bit the music morph and the music change i love it all right so um enough about that i love the story though and i appreciate when you share that kind of stuff very insightful now the music so tell us what you're going to perform for us and give us a little background on it. Yeah, so I'm gonna perform a song called Damned. Um, <laughs> it's a- I don't think we went with a happy one. On <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is kind of happy in a, in a weird sense. Um, but it's, it's about realizing that you're settling for something that you don't deserve in a relationship and you're deciding, oh, I don't give a damn anymore. See ya, I'm gonna go find something better for me or just 
be me. Um, so yeah, I went through a little, little bit of a hard relationship and, uh, this is a little angsty tune that came out of it and it's on the album self-titled. So, <laughs> all right, I'm going to take myself off. Lainey's going to take it away. All right. I don't usually get annoyed easily, but I've been sick hiding these feelings. It's always been about you, never been about me. Your heat go breaks to the ceiling. Every time I think we're going somewhere, turn around and say it's going nowhere. It's like talking to a brick wall, waiting for you to say what I want to hear, thinking it's my fault, but I can't control that you don't really care. If you're done with me, then I will let you leave. I'll never understand what happened, but now I don't give a damn. I don't wanna look you up on the internet. I don't wanna know what you've been doing. Say you're busy changing, still procrastinating. I'm communicating, trying to hold on. It's like talking to a brick wall, waiting for you to say what I wanna hear, thinking it's my fault. But I can't control that you don't really care. If you're done with me, then I will let you leave. I'll never understand. What happened? But now I don't give a damn. How am I gonna make you stay if you don't appreciate me? I'm not gonna fight for you if you won't fight for me. How am I gonna let you back in just so you can leave again? No, I'm not gonna. Gonna, I don't wanna, I'm too fed up to give a damn I'm not gonna make you stay if you don't appreciate me I'm not gonna fight for you if you won't fight for me I'm not gonna let you back in just so you can leave again No, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna, I'm too fed up to give a damn Duck it to a brick wall, waiting for you to say what I wanna hear Thinking it's my fault But I can't control that You don't really care If you're done with me Then I won't let you leave I'll never understand What happened But now I don't give a damn I don't give a damn I don't give a damn No I don't give a damn I don't give a damn no, I don't give a damn. Oh my God. Wow. All right. So, uh, confession, of course, if you've watched the show before, if you haven't, that's fine. But I take myself off for two reasons. The first one, what if you're really bad? <laughs> um, <laughs> and I can't, I am not really good at not. Hiding the facial, yeah. Yeah, no. I did that once and I realized this is bad. You have got to take yourself <laughs> off. But the majority of the time, it's because I'm listening and getting into it and moving. And, you know, I'm an old guy and nobody wants to see me move. But what I loved, uh, I loved that song. I love your voice. I really listened. That's why I love when you tell the story about the song or at least a little background. Uh, because at the end, I'm like, well, I don't give a damn either. <laughs> Um, so good. God, that was thank so you. That was so good. I loved it. So I want everyone to know the best way that they can find your music, download it. Hey guys, she's a creative. You should buy it. Um, <laughs> follow her on social. What's the best way they can find out more? Yeah, so everything is on ladydion.com, which is scrolling on the bottom here, right? Yes, yeah. it is. And um uh, Instagram and Facebook are Lainey's Music. Everything else is at Lainey's Dion. Lainey's Dion. Lainey Dion. Um, don't know my own name. All right, uh, I didn't do so good. Either, so. <laughs> but I'm on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, the whole shebang. So please find me. <laughs> Amazing. I would love to have you back whenever you want. It's so wonderful to have somebody talented, super talented like that. That was 
Just so good. I really, really. Oh, thank you. All right, y'all go to Lainey Dion. <laughs> Did I do it right? Yes. Dion. Dion. We're going Dion. with any pronunciation today. That's how it's going to go. <laughs> I'm having a hard time today. <laughs> Woo, at least we're not buffered like I had last night of two hours yesterday. <laughs> Um, but thank you so much. That was so good. You guys go to her website, follow her on social, go to all of the music platforms, uh, download her stuff, buy it. If she has merch, do it, but certainly follow her and find out what she's doing. Please come back. That was absolutely amazing. I love it. I'd love to. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Lainey. <laughs> I won't even try. I'll have a good weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye everybody.